Hey everyone, welcome to part two of our RV tour. We recently shared a video where Hillary walked through all of the interior of our RV. I'm gonna spend some time today walking around the exterior, showing you all of the systems and telling you why we chose this as our house on wheels. So let's start up front with the door and the entryway and the keyless entry. Our RV has a keyless entry, which allows us to open the door, lock the door. We can open all the bins, lock all the bins. It's actually really handy. We rarely use the key in our RV. We always, almost always use this uh, keyless entry. And we've only forgot the code once. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We also have three awnings over the top of the RV which we can open from right here inside the door. So let me quickly just open. Hey, Axel. Hey, buddy, you're in the way of the video, man. Hey, bud, come on, let's go. Come on, back inside, back inside. Uh, come on, up you go, get up in there. Yeah, and the nice thing about our awnings is they have automatic wind sensors. So even today, we put them out in the wind, we're comfortable knowing that if there is any kind of a wind that picks up, uh, they'll automatically retract and go back in. We don't always depend on it, but it's nice to know that we have it as a backup and a safety feature. We also have these steps which automatically retract when we, when we uh, park and open the door initially, but now they're locked, so they stay out all the time when we're parked. The last thing I suppose is the magna shades. So we like to put up the magna shades whenever we're parked anywhere for an extended period. Uh, they keep out the sun, protect from UV, and then we've got the magna shades on the tires as well. And we use those again to protect from the UV. Our tires are very expensive, so we wanna do everything that we can to protect them from the sun and from the elements. And these are all custom fit shades for our windows specifically. So you put in the specs when you order them and then they come with strong magnets. So they're just held on with really strong magnets. So let's start with all of our under storage. We've got a lot of bins and storage underneath and we'll walk you through uh, all of the storage and, and what each of the bins are for. So the first bin here is a full slide out. It goes all the way underneath the entire coach. It's really nice for a lot of the big items and you can see I try to keep everything in bins just for organization but we've got access to about two-thirds of the bin from either side. I swear this is the one place where Chris is uber organized is when it comes to our <laughs> bins underneath the RV and also his tools. Those he keeps well, spick and span at all times. It's important to be able to find things when you need them. So then the second one this is a half bin or a half slide, I guess would be a better way to call it. So each of these only come out on one side. And this is again, we got a Starlink, uh, we've got some cleaning supplies some dog food and things, but again, just random storage. And a, a, we have a ton of storage inside the RV. And that's one of the nice upgrades too from our Super C. Our Super C had a good bit of storage underneath, but it didn't have those rollout trays. So it was hard to access yeah, the sure. bins. We have a lot more storage. Uh, we've got 150 gallons of diesel in our RV and we can access it from either side. I rarely access it from this side, but we have the ability to fill up uh, our diesel tanks on this side or on the driver's side. It's handy if we have to pull into a gas station that only has uh, access on this point, but we do rarely use this side. Another bin here, this is where all of our hydraulics are at. So these hydraulics, and this system is used for everything that's hydraulic in our coach. It manages the lifts, manages the big slide on the other uh, side of the coach. We rarely get into this area of the coach, but it's good to know we've got manual access to any of the slides. If anything were to go wrong with the electronics, we can control everything manually from here. Also can't forget the TV. So it's handy, it's nice to be sitting outside. Got about a 50 inch TV and it's fully adjustable. So when we're sitting outside, we can 
watch uh, game day or watch the latest or the most recent Formula One race? Well, I can watch game day because I'm a football fan and Chris can watch racing because he's go. a racing guy. <laughs> and then it pops back in. All of our TVs are hooked up to Roku, so we run everything wirelessly off of Roku, which makes it very handy. So the next bin, these are our house batteries. Uh, we have eight lead acid, six volt batteries. At some point, I'd like to upgrade these to lithium, give us more ability to boondock. Right now, we probably get about 24 hours on our batteries, but would love to have more overall duration. And then in this spin, we've got a bunch of our electrical systems. We've got a battery control center, which manages solar and batteries and everything coming in. We've got our transformer and our surge suppressor so that we've got surge suppression whenever we're connected to shore power. We've also got a trickle charger, which keeps our coach batteries charged whenever we're in a lot for a long time. Next, we we'll move back to the last bin on this side, which is really just access for the engine and components around the engine. So we've got a backup DEF access. Again, we've got DEF access on both points, just like our diesel, but that's our uh, backup. We've got our coach batteries, 24 volts of coach batteries. So these actually are used for the engine, uh, to start the engine. We've got fuel filters, uh, water separator, and our fuel filter, again, really easy access, and then uh, disconnects if we need to disconnect the chassis batteries or disconnect the uh, house batteries. What's nice about this is just how easy it is to access everything. When I change the filters, when I have to do the oil and the service, I can access everything really easily. You don't have to crawl into the coach, don't have to get near the gas tank, it's really, or the diesel tank, it's really handy. So this is actually our Jeep that we tow behind the RV, our towed, if you will. It's a great vehicle for towing. It was designed by Jeep to be towed, easy to put into neutral, easy to tow, all set up, ready to go. We named her Jojo. So this is Jojo the Jeep, or Jolene actually is her full name. So we love to play the Dolly Parton song when we drive the Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> so let's come back to the best part of the RV, the back end of the RV, my favorite part of the RV. <laughs> so. One of the reasons that we looked at this particular RV was the chassis, and the chassis is designed to tow 20,000 pounds. We wanted an RV that could tow my race trailer, which is a stacker trailer, a 28-foot stacker trailer. Uh, it needs to be about 18,000 pounds, so this RV being able to tow 20,000 pounds is great for us. It's built on, like I said, the Freightliner custom chassis. It's got a Cummins X15 engine, which is a 15 liter engine. It has 605 horsepower, 2,000 foot-pounds of torque, and 12 gallons of oil for those paying attention. So essentially it's a really big engine is what I'm hearing. <laughs> it's massive. Those numbers yes. mean nothing to me, but I'm assuming they mean something to other people. <laughs> what it gives us the ability to do is race up and down the Rocky Mountains, pull a trailer, pull a Jeep, do whatever we want to do, and never hold up traffic. We I wouldn't say racing, but going the speed limit at least. <laughs> Fine, the speed limit plus two. We're never the people holding up traffic, that's for sure. And one thing to note again about the reason why we went with this American coach model is that we looked at some competitive models, but they most of them for this size RV were built on a engine that had only 450 horsepower. Yeah, right? the nine liter Cummins, which is about 450 horsepower. And, at, you know, Chris really wanted to go with the bigger engine to make sure that we always had enough power, especially when towing. And I would say if you've got a tag axle 45 footer like we do, the 605 is really one of those upgrades that you should spend the money on. Yeah, it's definitely worth it. I think what Cummins says is that they never run into a hill that they can't power through or something like I that. I think they say, wait, no, it's uh, Cummins says that the engine doesn't even, that the RV doesn't even know hills exist. Yeah, and I think that's generally true. We definitely don't have a problem with hills. The other thing about this, because of the size of the engine and the way that it's configured, uh, Freightliner put a side radiator, radiator in it. It just allows airflow. It's a much bigger radiator because it's on the side never gets hot. This thing runs at about 170 to 190 degrees, even when we're going uphill, uh, even in the middle of the desert. So it's a great RV and a great chassis. We've got our Starlink mounted up on a flagpole buddy, which works great, really easy to mount. Doesn't require me to get out on a ladder or do anything special, but uh, it's a great mount, gives us full access to Starlink.
And just one thing to note there about our internet. So we have Starlink, AT&T, and T-Mobile. We use Starlink when we're in places like this where we've got clear access, unobstructed views to the sky. That's when it really works the best. And then we've also got our hotspots in case we're in shadier locations or places in the city where we don't need Starlink as right. much. We've also got the exit door. A lot of people ask us what this door is. This is the inside. If you go back to the interior video, you can see in our bathroom, Hillary mentions the exterior door. This is the emergency egress that we have. If anything were to ever happen, we can get out the backside of the RV. And the reason why we have that is because we only have one entry door to this Correct. RV, which is on the passenger side. So it's a lot different from our Super C where we had multiple doors. This only has one entry door. So this is on the other side in the event that we rolled over or something yeah. catastrophic happened, we could get out. Hopefully we never have to use it, but it's good to know that it's there just in case. Uh, and for the sake of this video, we actually put the slide in because of where we're parked in the bushes. It's easier for us to actually show everything with the slide in. So right now you're seeing the coach with the slide in. This is actually just another def, like I mentioned on the other side, we've got def uh, fillers on each side. This is the one we primarily use because it's on the driver's side, uh, but we could fill from either side. Let's move on to the next bin, which happens to be our wet bay where all the excitement happens. I gotta get around these bushes here. <laughs> it's a little tight back here. So in here we have access to everything that we use from a wet bay perspective. We've got our water that comes in directly from the city water that we're connected to. We've got 220 volt uh, cord that's where we're connected to the city electric. We've got access to our black tank valves, our gray tank valves, everything comes out of our sewer. Right now we actually have our flushing hose hooked in, but this is access to everything from inside of our bays. And for those who aren't familiar with the terminology, explain what black, gray, fresh, all that means. Yeah, sure. So we've got black, which is everything that comes out of the toilets, hence why it's called black. We've got our gray tank, which is everything that comes out of the washer, the dishwasher, and the sinks and the showers, so it's gray. We typically empty these on a 24 hour basis. Always empty the black tank first and the gray tank second, that's the key. And then we've got our fresh water tank in here. We store about 100 gallons of fresh water, 75 gallons of gray and 75 gallons of black. And so when we're boondocking, we are able to use our tanks for longer periods of time if we need to for our fresh tank of water and then also for our gray and black tanks. So we've got a good bit of capacity to boondock if we need to, but we are more than like 95% of the time, we're at an RV park where we're hooked up to full hookups. Yeah, we're not real big boondockers, quite <laughs> honestly. We like our showers and we like our electricity. Inside here is just our aqua hot. This is our system that gives us instant hot water at all times. This system is what keep, gives us heat. It gives us hot water. Uh, it's got its own, it runs off of diesel. So again, this is a diesel driven and electric driven hot water system and heat based system. And it is one of those things, it's unlimited hot water. So as long as we have diesel or electric, we can get hot water and it's amazing. You can take a super long hot shower if you want to. It's a really great feature to have. Right, it's again, it's where all our heat comes from. So it's pretty nice. It's also run through the coach. So it helps us winterize the coach. So they run this along all of the water lines and things. So if we're in really cold climates, we don't have to worry too much about things freezing. Another storage bay. This one is primarily for uh, electrical components. So we've got our Starlink uh, router in here. I've got my DeWalt battery charger in here. We've got some electrical stuff. Again, primarily all just electrical components, but it is just another storage component, uh, storage container. Our primary diesel access, again, everything that we use from a primary perspective is on the driver's side. So when we stop and get diesel and def, this is where I'm getting access. And now we're into the other side of the storage bay. So like I mentioned on the other side, these are just half bays. Lots of storage. Uh, again, everything's in bins. So you can see our toilet paper and paper <laughs> towels. We stock up at Costco. Yeah, and I think we've got coffee in this one. So that's the most important. Really easy to push everything in and out. We looked at the power option when we bought this, but I think I actually prefer the non-power option because- To the sliding trays. To the sliding trays, sorry. Yeah, because I can pull them out so quickly. Yeah, the power trays took forever to come out. And honestly, it's just one more thing that could break. Yeah. And this is the other side of the 
full slide and like you can see I can access like I can access this from either side so it's kind of like a two-thirds come out of the full tray this is where all my tools are at one of my favorite areas very neatly organized of course yep of course and this Wait. toolbox we just got off Amazon but it works great because it fits perfectly and he's able to organize all of his tools yep zip tie certified zip tie certified on this side we also have window coverings we use these window coverings they're manual we have to put them down with the little rod that we have stored in there but we use them whenever it's sunny outside or we're in a warm spot again it keeps the sun from coming in through these windows and they make a big difference on the inside temperature of the rv last but not least on this side we've got our final bin in this bin we've got access to a number of fuses and relays we've also got access to our air service it's where I can plug into the air compressor on the coach and allow myself and give myself access to fill up the tires or fill up an air mattress if I need to. It's also where we can extend the front, which I'll do here in a second. This is just an automatic extension to get access to the generator and all of the things up front in the coach. It takes a little bit of time, but it's better than doing it by hand. <laughs> I always feel like this makes our RV look like a transformer. It does look kind of cool. So in here we've got a 12.5 kilowatt Cummins or Onan generator. We can control it from outside uh, manually or we can control it from the inside from the uh, control panel, which I think Hillary shared on the interior review. We've also got access to steering components and various electrical components the ac box here the heat box here it just gives you some access to the different things up inside up front in the coach with the engine in the back there isn't a whole lot up front other than the generator and all this random wiring but still handy to be able to access it and the generator we predominantly use that when we boondock to power our induction cooktop and the ac units otherwise we can run off batteries for the most part but those are the things we really need yeah they take a little bit too much wattage amperage uh, to run off the batteries but so we will run the generator for those big items and then just like it went out comes back in and again it's it's nice because this actually has, it's down here by my side, but it's got an exhaust that comes out of the side. So when the generator's running, you really don't hear it. You don't smell it. It's nice and clean. Again, it's all diesel, like everything else in the coach. So really handy. What's great about this coach is it's a class A diesel pusher. So the engine's in the back. When we're driving down the road, we don't hear any engine noise at all. Uh, it's on a Freightliner custom chassis, which I mentioned, but it's all V-Ride suspension, independent front suspension, on airbags, super smooth, super nice coach. Yeah, and since we do a lot of driving, compared to our old Super C, this is just a much quieter and smoother driving experience. With our Super C, it was so noisy, we could barely have a conversation. This is super quiet up front. Yeah, it's much bigger. It's like driving a bus versus driving a truck, but overall the ride and the quiet and the comfort, much better than the C. And that's a wrap for the full exterior tour of our house on wheels. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.